Hello all. Welcome to Easy Electronics. Today's video is an MCQ video for DSP and the topics covering in this video are DFT, IDFT, linear convolution, circular convolution, overlap add and overlap C. I really hope that this video will be very much useful for all the aspirants for preparing for interviews in core companies of electronics and also for students who are preparing for exams. I have included 10 questions in this video and let's see what are the questions. The first question is which of the following is true regarding the number of computations required to compute an endpoint DFT? The options given are a n square complex uh, multiplications and n into n minus 1 complex additions b n square complex addition and n into n minus 1 complex multiplications c n square complex multiplication and n into n plus 1 complex additions option d n square complex additions and n into n plus 1 complex multiplications so while answering this question you have to think of the dft equation we have already discussed the dft equation and how to compute dft in an earlier video so uh, by keeping that in uh, mind you have to answer this question so you know that the dft equation includes a complex term so there are complex multiplications and complex additions Let's see what is the answer. The answer for the question number 1 is option A that is n square complex multiplications and n into n minus 1 complex additions. I have given the DFT equation here. You know that at each point of k value that is k varies from 0 to capital N minus 1 uh, where uh, n is the capital N is the length of your input sequence. So the k varies from 0 to n minus 1 that is n times capital N times you are going to vary the k value and at each k point you are performing n complex multiplications and n minus 1 complex additions. So at each point of k you are performing n complex multiplications and n minus 1 complex additions and since you are varying the value of k n times that is n into n multiplication and n into n minus 1 complex additions make a total of n square complex multiplication and n into n minus 1 complex additions. So that is your correct answer which is option A. Let's see what is the next question. Next question is the circular convolution of two sequences in time domain is equivalent to so by reading the question itself we understood that it is something related to the property of DFT. I'll read out the options. Option A multiplication of DFT of two sequences. B summation of DFT of two sequences. Option C difference of DFT of two sequences. Option uh, D so, uh, square of multiplication of DFTs of two sequences. This is a very simple question if you know the DFT properties. The answer is option A, multiplication of DFT of two sequences. According to the circular convolution property, you know that the circular convolution of two sequences is equal to the product of its DFTs. So if you know the property, you can answer it in hardly one second. Next question is question number three. If x of n is a real sequence and x of k is its n point DFT, then which of the following is true? So this is again related to the DFT properties here. The options given are x of n minus k equal to x of minus k, b x of n minus k equal to x star of k, c x of minus k equal to x star of k, d all of the mentioned. So this is related to the complex conjugate property here. So you have to answer the question by keeping that in mind. The answer for the question is option D that is all of the mentioned option D is all of the mentioned and which is the correct answer here. So I have given the uh, equation for computing x of k and uh, the equation for computing x of n minus k. So uh, according to the complex conjugate property x of n minus k equal to x star of k which is equal to x of minus k. So if you know this complex conjugate property, you can answer it very easily. 
so i have all uh, i have shown here how to find the x of n minus k and how it is equal to x star of k so that is the answer the correct answer is option d next question is question number 4 if x of n is a real and even then what is the dft of x of n so uh, here you are uh, going to uh, apply uh, some properties again here and uh, you are taking a sequence which is uh, real and even you know that a sequence is said to be real if its imaginary part is zero that is the j term will be zero uh, that is will be carrying a zero coefficient then uh, you see that the sequence is a real sequence so what will be its dft option a j 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k sine 2 pi k n by capital n option b 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k cos 2 pi k n by capital n c minus j 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k sin 2 pi k n by capital n and option d is none of the above so you have to think about the complex term and what is its coefficient to answer this question the answer for the question is option b that is x of k equal to sigma n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n cos 2 pi k n by n so uh, it is already given that the x of n is a real sequence that is e raised to uh, j theta you can write as cos theta plus j sin theta so if the sequence is real then the j sin theta term doesn't exist that is it will be zero so while taking the dft also x i of k equal to zero that is the imaginary term vanishes and only the cos term exists and hence the dft reduces to an equation with only cos term without any complex term or sine term that is x of k is sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n cos 2 pi k n by capital n so that is the right answer which is option b next question is related to overlap save method the overlap save method is used to calculate option a the discrete convolution between a sampled signal and a finite impulse response filter option b the discrete convolution between a sample signal and an infinite impulse response fil filter option c the discrete convolution between a very long signal and a finite impulse response filter option d the discrete convolution between a very long signal and uh, infinite uh, response filter so this is a very uh, simple question it is only the basics of overlap save method so uh, what is uh, actually overlap save method why we are using it so if you know that you can answer this question the answer for the question is option c that is the discrete convolution between a very long signal and a infi uh, and a finite impulse response filter so we, you know that the overlap uh, save method is coming under the uh, the filtering of long duration sequences so it is a method used for filter a long duration signal and you know that it is done with the help of a h of n which is a impulse response of a filter and you know that h of n is having a fixed length which is given as m so you have already we have already discussed the overlap save method so in that we you know that how to ca calculate the uh, overlap save of a long duration sequence which at, uh, with the help of h of n so uh, a very long signal is filtered with the help of a impulse response which is having a finite length so the answer is option c the discrete convolution between a very long signal and a in and a finite response filter it is finite because you have a uh, impulse response with a finite length so the option here is option c next question is related to overlap add method and the question is overlap add method deals with principle that so this is the basic principle of overlap add they are asking the options given are a the linear convolution of a discrete time signal of length l and a discrete time signal of length m produces a discrete time convolved result of length l plus m minus 1 
ऑप्शन बी द लीनियर कन्वल्यूशन ऑफ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल ऑफ लेंथ एल एंड द डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल ऑफ लेंथ एम प्रोड्यूस अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम कन्वॉल रिजल्ट ऑफ लेंथ एल प्लस एम ऑप्शन सी द लीनियर कन्वल्यूशन ऑफ अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल ऑफ लेंथ एल एंड अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल ऑफ लेंथ एम प्रोड्यूस अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम कन्वॉल रिजल्ट ऑफ लेंथ टू एल प्लस एम माइनस वन ऑप्शन डी द लीनियर कन्वल्यूशन ऑफ अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल ऑफ लेंथ एल एंड अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल ऑफ लेंथ एम प्रोड्यूस अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम कन्वॉल रिजल्ट ऑफ लेंथ टू एल प्लस टू एम माइनस वन सो दिस इज अ बेसिक क्वेश्चन आस्किंग द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ओवरलैप एड मेथड the answer here is option a you know that uh, we have already discussed how to compute overlap add so you know that there is a signal of length l and you are taking an impulse response of length m and you are making a time convolved result with length l plus m minus 1 so please check the video on overlap add method uh, which deals with this question this question is just a basic principle of overlap add method and the option here correct is option a the next question is question number 7 if x1 of k and x2 of k are the n point dfts of x1 of n and x2 of n respectively then what is the n point dft of x of n equal to a x1 of n plus b x2 of n again this is one of the very basic properties of dft the options here given are a x1 a of k plus x2 b of k here a of k and b of k come inside the angular brackets option b a x1 of k plus b x2 of k option c e raised to a k x1 of k plus e raised to b k x2 of k option d none of the mentioned so this is uh, this question will only take a second if you know the basic dft properties the answer is option b a x1 of k plus b x2 of k so this is nothing but the linearity property of dft i have al also included the explanation if you know the property you don't need the explanation you can directly answer the question but in case if you have any doubt just put the value of x of n as a x1 of n plus b x2 of n and compute the dft you will get the result as option b so the option b is a correct answer here next question is question number 8 if x1 of n x2 of n and x3 of m are three sequences each of length n whose dfts are given as x1 of k x2 of k and x3 of k respectively and x3 of k equal to x1 of k into x2 of k then what is the expression for x3 of m the options given are a sigma n equal to 0 to capital n minus 1 x1 of n x2 into x2 of m plus n option b sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n into x2 of m minus n option c sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n into x2 of m minus n and the last option is sigma n equal to 0 to capital n minus 1 x1 of n into x2 of m plus n so again if you know the options if you have seen the options and if you have seen the question you again understood this is something related to dft property so there are lot of questions been asked in mcqs based on the dft property so you have to study dft properties at least the properties thoroughly if you are going for an interview in the core companies of electronics so please go through the dft properties so here the option correct is option c that is uh, nothing but the multiplication property of dft so if x1 of n x2 of n and x3 of m are three sequences of length n and the dfts are x1 of k x2 of k and x3 of k then and if it is given as x3 of k equal to x1 of k into x2 of k then according to the multiplication property the reverse that is x3 of m that is i dft of x3 of k is obtained from the circular convolution of the inputs x1 of n and x2 of n so the circular convolution of x1 of n and x2 of n is obtained from option c option c is the equation for circular convolution here so here 
the C is the correct option for circular convolution and hence it is a right answer. So you have to find uh, the X3 of N so which is obtained from the circular convolution of X1 of N and and hence the correct answer here is option C. Next question is question number 9 that is time shifting of discrete and hence the correct answer here is option C. Next is uh, question number 9 which is time shifting of discrete time signal means option A y of n equal to x of n minus k option B y of n equal to x of minus n minus k option C y of n equal to minus x of n minus k option D y of n equal to x of n plus k. So time shifting property you have to uh, explain. So it is one of the basic properties in DSP. Shifting the time means you are going to shift the uh, inner variable by some values. So uh, it is one of the basic uh, principles in of signals, discrete time signals. If you know the signals uh, subject, you can answer this question very easily. The option correct here is option A, which is y of n equal to x of n minus k. That is you are going to shift the inner variable. Next is the last question, which is Time reversal of discrete time signal refers to options are A y of n equal to x of minus n plus k B y of n equal to x of minus n option C y of n equal to x of minus n minus k option D y of n equal to x of n minus k so you are going to reverse the signal so for that you have to reverse the inner variable in the equation and the option correct here is option B that is y of n equal to x of minus n. So these are the 10 questions which we have uh, discussed in this MCQ video. I will be uploading more MCQ videos if you request for, the, for those. Please comment in the comment section how was the video and uh, please comment if you want more MCQ videos on DSP. Thank you for watching the video and please uh, like and subscribe if you thought that the video was useful. Thank you.